Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Aha, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. In 
theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cull Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Ah-ha-ha! <laughs> A change of clothes! What is this, some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal.
As always, I am at your disposal. Anything you'd like to discuss? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness, a natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra II. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifests to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain, uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain.
Make yourself at home, Captain. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning SAM. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify SAM. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. Pleasure, Captain. As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. I have lots of minutes, many minutes, unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Traveling the system with you, Captain. Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel that. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? How can I be of assistance? May luck be with you. Of course. As I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. We've arrived. at Dick Phineas's orbital lab. <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast, that's loud! I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. 
mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. change color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. Ten seconds. 
seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least 12 seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. Life outside work? No, of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Because we've lost our way, the board has a stranglehold over this colony, and we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you, people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense. Precisely. The chemical I need is dimethyl sulfoxide, a rare, potent, essential to reviving long-frozen bodies. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. Get it? get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of cathanoid fading. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker.